Um, so hello and welcome to today's session, which looks at how to build your China market entry strategy. My name is Marta Senjo and I am Ashley's colleague at the Advertising Association. We believe that marketing communications are an essential part of an export strategy for brand, a brand to be successful. With a school of diverse skills, global talent, and world-class creative capabilities, the UK communication strategy is equipped to support brands, whether small or large, to win new customers over the world. UK advertising is not just your getaway to Britain, it's your getaway to everywhere. Um, so before I hand over to our fantastic speaker, Jess Meng, Senior Business Development Consultant at Pimpon Digital, I wanted to cover some housekeeping to ensure you get the most out of this session. We kindly ask you to put your questions in the chat box and I will post this to our speaker at the end of the presentation. And this doesn't mean that you have to wait till the end of the presentation to post your question. You can write it at any time. Um, the session is being recorded and we will make it available to all of you after International Trade Weeks has ended. The transcript of the session is available and you can turn it on using the navigation bar. And lastly, we kindly ask that you put your mic on silent during the presentation. Once again, we are delighted to have you join us for this session and I will now hand over to Jess. Hi everyone. Uh, my name is Jess, so I'm the Senior Business Development Consultant at Pingpong Digital. Um, so if you have any questions after today's session, uh, please do feel free to get in touch with me through my email address, uh, jess at pingpongdigital.com. Just a little bit of a background about our company. So we are a award-winning digital marketing agency, AKA the China Specialist. Um, so we have four locations in the world. Uh, we're based in uh, London and Birmingham in the UK. We have an office in uh, New York in the US. And of course we have a company in Shanghai in China. These five services are mainly what we provide to our clients, including social media management, paid media campaigns, website development, e-commerce and consulting services. Um, another thing I also wanted to mention as well is that we are very proudly to be selected by the five biggest Chinese social media tech giants, um, including WeChat, Weibo, Douyin, Toutiao and Baidu to be their official partner. And we are the only agency of our kind that has these partnership and affiliations. We work with over 100 clients globally, and here are some of the names that you probably heard of, um, including Harvard Business School, Hugo Boss, Westfield, the Estee Lauder Company, um, Gymshark, and many more. Yeah, so the agenda of today's talk is really to help you understand your market in China. Um, so I'm going to tell you some quick information that you need um, to kickstart with your China expansion uh, plan and strategy. Um, I'll also introduce some of the key channels that business all businesses should be present on um, on Chinese digital platforms. Um, so China is a huge market and uh, to avoid making any unnecessary investment, it's really important to get started at an initial stage with smart strategic um, plans on your communication strategy. So you'll be surprised how many successful Western brands can fail in China. Um, mainly was because they thought, you know, I'm very success successful in the global market already, so I can just implement my business strategy, my communication strategy that I use globally to the China market. I don't need to do too much research. I'm targeting the same target audience. So often when they're um, too arrogant and believe that they can use the same way um, in the China market, they could fail um, quite easily in the market as well. So in order to prevent this, um, we want to firstly in understand the core concept of your branding in China. You need to educate yourself with the available marketing channels, do your market research, understand who your Chinese target audience are, which could be very different from who you're targeting overseas, and then what channels are available for those target audience. You should learn about your Chinese consumer habits at the same time have a China specific business strategy plan. So firstly, I'm going to um, take you on an overview of Chinese digital landscape. Um, so here are some 
stat um, about the current digital landscape in China. Um, so there are over 830 million users in China that has constant access to internet. And 73% of them um, are urban residents. Really need to find that out through your market research. Um, China users is a very uh, mobile focused um, market. So you need to make sure that everything that you do is mobile um, optimized. And then they really have a user behavior of shopping online. So if more than 569 million of them um, shopped on platforms like Alibaba, like JD in the past three years. Um, if we take the huge population and make it into a smaller scale, and then we just assume that there are 10 people in China, um, we'll be looking at the age group um, that's between 20 to 39, um, that takes basically takes over more, um, almost half of the, those 10 people. But the mature population over 40 years old is, has been constantly growing. Um, so, for example, my parents are 53 and they constantly use WeChat and Weibo and Douyin on a daily basis. Um, three of those 10 people will be students um, and all of them would access Internet through their mobile devices. Um, seven of them would use short video apps like Douyin, which is Chinese version of TikTok. There's also Billy Billy, which is similar to YouTube, but for Gen Z. Um, eight of them would shop online, nine of them would use WeChat, um, and five of them would use Weibo. Um, more, basically, mo most of them would use um, payment methods, online payment methods like WeChat Pay or Alipay to purchase anything online or offline. Because of the Great Firewall, Chinese users that are based in China are not able to access any of the overseas social media platforms like Instagram, Twitter, um, Facebook, and et cetera. So Chinese tech giants has created this digital landscape, this um, environment, um, and uh, set up Chinese equivalent of all of the overseas social media, um, e-commerce, payment, video streaming platforms. So today we'll mainly be focusing on the social media part. Um, you probably recognize some of these logos on the page. Um, so on the social part, we have the two most popular uh, platforms that I will go into more details on, including WeChat and Weibo. We also have some other social platforms has um, basically developed drastically um, for the past few years, including Little Red Book and Douyin, which is Chinese TikTok. Um, on the search engine side, we do have quite a few search engine platforms, but Baidu would be the main focus for you if you're looking to be present on search, uh, search engine platforms. Um, it's very similar to Google. It takes over 90% of market share for search engine in China. There are some other platforms like Alipay would be the equivalent to PayPal. Uh, Ctrip is um, similar to TripAdvisor. And we also have Dianping, which is something like Groupon. Um, there's also a term in China called KOL. Um, it's short for key opinion leaders and is the equivalent of influencers in the overseas market. However, Chinese influence influencers, those KOLs, um, they are available in all different industries. It doesn't just limit on um, you know, fashion, beauty, FMCG, those very typical industries that would use influencers. But if by any chance you are a medical machinery B2B company, I'm pretty sure you can find a, a Chinese KOL on platforms like WeChat. Um, so according to the data, uh, we can see that the world most popular social media platform ranking, um, please bear in mind, only Chinese speaking users use Chinese social platforms. So WeChat is ranked the fifth in the world and we have is followed by Douyin um, and we also have Weibo, uh, which has over 573 monthly active users. So after learning a bit about the overview on digital landscape in China, um, the first step that you should take to go into the China market is to protect your IP. 
um, on Chinese digital platforms. So you can do that through verification. When you set up your account, it's very important to use your own business license to verify accounts on any platforms. So um, we, uh, I've screenshotted Gucci's accounts on uh, Weibo on the left and WeChat on the right. As you can see here, your eyes are immediately drawn to the verification badge on those two platforms. So when you um, have to do the verification process, you need to submit a lot of um, documents that's required by the platform of your business. Um, so it doesn't only just protect your brand on those platforms in China, at the same time, it does help you build trust with your customers. Because Chinese customers, they are very used to being scammed, so they're just being extra cautious when it comes to being communicated with uh, brands directly. So having an official account does help with the trust. Um, just to introduce a little bit more on WeChat, um, it, it has 1.1 billion active users on the platform out of 1.4 billion population. Um, so everyone who has internet access would have WeChat on their phone. It was launched in 2011, and it was simply a WhatsApp-like instant messaging app. But now it has been developed into, uh, we call it the Swiss Army Knife Super App, uh, which you can do anything you want on the platform. Um, you can order cabs, um, buy film tickets, pay your electricity bills, read news, listen to music, and, and even meet random people nearby. There's also an e-commerce function that WeChat has called e WeChat Mini Program Store. So brands can set up their own store and users can uh, browse, um, view the product details and purchase using WeChat Pay within this one app. So um, there's a screen recording that I'm going to play now on the left of the screen, uh, just to show you what the home page of your WeChat account would look like. So, um, the, the chat boxes and your um, the official accounts will also appear on the home page. Um, there's also a moment function, which is kind of like a Instagram function. So you can post articles, repost articles, post videos and pictures of your, yourself and share your lifestyle, like how you do it on Facebook. Um, so how can businesses utilize this platform? You can set up your WeChat official account or verified account using your overseas business license and make sure that you do use your own business license when you do so. Um, so an overseas account is called a service account um, and the local, only local China businesses can register other accounts. The main difference between a service account and all the other accounts is that um, service account can only post four times per month. However, we do believe that it's a reasonable amount of posts, uh, kind of like what you do for your newsletter, um, for your overseas market. So once a week is a good frequency. Um, yeah, so just to show you what an official account would look like as well. So you click on WeChat and then we use, again, use Gucci as an example. It's kind of like Gucci uh, posted a message to you and you click on the chat box and here are the past articles that they've posted in the past. Um, and then we click on one, it will lead you to the WeChat article. There are quite a lot of um, design and interactive elements that you can do on your WeChat account. And if you are an e-commerce brand and you want to utilize their e-commerce function, we can also link the product information into your WeChat article. So while users are reading uh, the product um, article, they can click on um, the WeChat mini program function and being directed to purchase within WeChat. There's also a commenting function on WeChat as well. So since Chinese users really do not have the habit of using their emails on a daily basis or subscribe to email newsletters, WeChat is, would be the best alternative to post long um, article format content to your target audience. We do recommend companies in all different industries to be present on WeChat on an official presence. 
um, and users are able to view your articles, interact with it, share it in the uh, WeChat groups on the moment, um, and also subscribe to your account and uh, keep, get updated by you on a weekly basis. Okay, so um, Weibo, it was actually launched in 2009 by a company called Sina. Um, it's evolved from a long blog platform into a simplified version of a short blog platform formed by a short copywriting within 150 words um, plus video and all image assets. Very similar to Twitter, however, users can do a lot more on um, Weibo than what they can do on Twitter. Uh, unlike Twitter, Weibo is not just focused on one single area. There is news sharing and politics involved on Weibo. However, um, there are many other functions and many other industries that people would look like when they're on Weibo. So Weibo is very popular in China. It has over 573 million monthly active users now. Um, so if you are a brand, especially a B2C brand, uh, Weibo would be a key platform for you to be present on. And again, just to show you what Weibo look like quickly. So there's an opening ad, um, and then on the home page will be who you follow um, on your account. You also receive ads. So as a business, you can run ads on the platform, and user will receive your ads in their feed, and they can click on the ad and engage with you. Um, this is what a business a verified account would look like on Weibo. So you get the little blue tick, like how you, um, what you do on Instagram, um, and then you can do quite a lot of design element on your homepage as well. Um, here are some of the other functions that's available on Weibo. Um, and as a business, you can do very interactive style of campaign on your business account. Um, so you can either um, create lucky draw campaign, giveaway campaign, and encourage user-generated content on the platform utilizing the hashtag functions. So um, after setting up your IP, before you have any official presence, the most important thing is to do your market research. There are three key market research strategy that we would recommend to start with, um, including firstly, to understand your industry market in China, because it could operate very differently compared to your local market. You need to create a unique China-focused brand strategy, including your verbal and visual identity, um, in order to use as the foundation of your China expansion. Um, then after the first two steps, you can start creating your China communication strategy, including social media, visual, website, um, in order to, to support your future marketing activities. Um, you should also ask yourself those three questions during your market research and strategy process. So firstly, understand your target audience. Who are they? Um, they can be very, very different from your overseas um, target audience and what are the Chinese target audience expectations? Um, and then what have you what have you achieved in China? Because some overseas brands, they probably have a certain um, brand awareness on Chinese platforms already. So do your social listening, listen to your target audience and see what you can learn from it. And then in order to achieve great success for your brand in China, you should be looking at your vision and your goal specifically for this market. Um, okay, so after all of that, I think it's very important to prepare your brand launch campaign. So there are mainly six elements that's included um, in the launch campaign on Chinese platforms. First one will be the market research that you've done. And then based on that, you can uh, come up with your own creative, uh, your, your main creative for the launch, launch campaign. You should also um, design a key visual for the campaign and create your market met uh, marketing metrics. 
Um, utilizing hashtags on different Chinese platforms can be really helpful as well. Um, at the same time, you should plan your timeline wisely for your launch campaign. So in order to make it more visible for you um, to show how uh, what a launch campaign would involve, uh, I'm going to use this case study that we have with one of our clients, Molten Brown. So Molten Brown actually had a certain brand awareness on Chinese platforms like Weibo and Little Red Book before they officially launched in China. But mainly all of those um, presents would be uh, from UK-based Chinese audience. So students, uh, working professionals like myself that live in the UK and have access to Morton Brown. However, um, they decided to step into the China market properly in 2020 um, and Ping Pong Digital has supported them on the whole launch of the brand and their Tmall store. The first step is to learn about the market and the insights that we found out is that back in 2020, the perfume and luxury body care industry um, has been, is, was projected to expand to 40 billion RMB in 2022. So it's a great opportunity for a brand like Morton Brown who produce very high quality body care products. Um, most of the existing presence on Chinese platforms before they launched, uh, like I said earlier, um, was mainly in the overseas Chinese uh, market, so Chinese audience, target audience group. Um, they do have quite limited domestic awareness and the brand is seen as a very niche brand. Um, so the brand is perceived on Chinese platforms uh, through our social listening between the high-end luxury body care product and a new player in the fragrance market. So we also found out very interesting insights on the fragrance market that um, how practical a fragrance um, to everyday life for a Chinese consumer is very important. So they often relate this perfume um, with the job interview, a different one when they go on a date, and then a different fragrance when they go uh, to a party with their friends. So that is a very interesting insight and we have implemented that on our communication strategy. Um, we've also come up with the main creative tagline uh, in Chinese is gan xiang, gan xiang. Um, and it's translated into uh, English, which sounds a little bit funny, but it, it means dare to smell good, dare to indulge. So this is the messaging pyramid we have worked on. Um, there are a few different levels. On the top, we have the main campaign um, communication point. Um, so it's the gan xiang, gan xiang. And then we have on the brand level, uh, we want to portray Morton Brown as a British heritage royal endorsement brand. Um, the reason for this is Chinese, when it comes to purchasing um, British products being royal indulged is very <laughs> attractive, uh, unique selling points for Chinese um, audience. And then on the product level, uh, we want Morton Brown's product to be seen as uh, has the best quality and bring a luxury experience and lifestyle. For the launch campaign, we also come up with this marketing matrix, so which includes mainly five different parts, including the organic part. We have WeChat and Weibo, and we um, organized and created organic posts in order to announce the launch at the same time drive traffic to their Tmall store. Uh, we also run ads alongside with organic content uh, to increase brand awareness and grow the account and direct traffic at the same time. Um, and for seeding purposes, we work specifically with uh, KOLs, the key opinion leaders, and the KOCs, the key opinion customers, which are basically the micro influencers um, on the platform Little Red Book in order to drive up the brand awareness um, and the desired topicality. We also work with some very specialized big KOLs on Weibo. Um, so they are very fragrance, uh, specialized in fragrance and perfume and body care products and produce very high quality content. Um, so they really helped us to drive volume of the brand awareness. 
last but not least, um, we have launched this uh, competition campaign, which is a giveaway campaign, which really helped with engaging with a wider audience that have not heard of Molten Brown before. We designed different hashtags for different campaigns on various platforms. Um, so for organic and ads, um, we want to enforce the Britishness of the brand. And then for little uh, Red Bull and Weibo, um, again, it's focused on British, um, the identity of being British, but it's a um, frequent luxury product. So here are some of the screenshots that we have for the campaign we've done, including on the left, we have organic Weibo posts, organic WeChat article in the middle and Weibo in-stream ads. So you can see there's this key visual that we've developed um, and there are quite a lot of design elements on everything we've created. Um, some screenshots for the KOL campaigns on uh, both Weibo and a little red book. The um, specifically called for the KOL campaign, it was really, really successful. So we've gained feedback from the clients that we've achieved over 3.59% of conversion and 39% of ROI just from KOL campaigns. So if you are a B2C brand, KOL is definitely one of the key um, campaign elements that you should consider when you launch your brand and when you um, launch any sales campaign. Um, and yeah, that's all the content that I have so far for today's talk. Um, I can see we already have some questions. Hi, yes. Thank you very much for your presentation. Um, so we have one question and they say, as a B2B business, LinkedIn is my company's key social media platform. So how effective for LinkedIn in China to be a promotional media platform? Yeah. Um, and thank you for the question. So LinkedIn was actually blocked earlier last year in China, so it's not really available for Chinese audience anymore. Um, so you should consider utilizing other platforms that are more B2B focused, um, including platforms like WeChat, Baidu. Um, also, Toutiao is a really good um, platform for B2B um, paid media targeting. Um, there's also a Chinese version of LinkedIn called Mai Mai, um, which they're quite new to the overseas market if you only operate overseas and you don't have a China business um, license, but they, uh, there's probably something you can do on Mai Mai as well. Okay, um, thank you very much. And then, oh, some, a new question. <laughs> Can you, so you gave some great examples of brands in your presentation. Can you give an example of a brand that has done very well in the market, preferably a UK or international brand that has gone into the Chinese market that we could learn from? Yeah, um, so I guess there's no industry specific. No. Okay, yeah, yes. um, so um, I'll use Gymshark as an example. So we've been working with them since they first launched their digital presence on Chinese platforms. Um, mainly the activities we do are um, promoting their exist uh, the, the accounts that we set up and verified for them and um, increase engagement on those platforms. So it has been very successful for them um, for the past two years of working with them. Um, and their Douyin account has grown um, organically very well um, just through the content that we've created and localized for them um, on the, in the platform. So yeah, um, we've worked with many international and UK B2C brands on this part and it's definitely um, one of our specialties on um, you know, pushing your brands to the China market. Thank you. Um, so one more. <laughs> What would we'll recommend as a start point for an SME looking to start the export journey? What would be your recommendation? Yeah, um, it really depends on your industry. Then we would recommend um, different platform for you. And um, please do feel free to get in touch with me. This is my WeChat QR code um, on the screen. If you don't have WeChat, don't worry, you can get in touch with me through email. Mm -hmm. So we can have a quick chat to explore the opportunity. Um, we do 
work with and have spoken with a lot of um, small to medium um, companies and brands. Um, and, you know, China is a huge market, but it can also be very costly. So in order to test the water of the market, we sometimes recommend you to start from the UK based Chinese audience. Um, so it really depends on what products that you sell um, and what industry you're in, if they are suitable for the student group here in the UK. Um, then it's a, because Chinese students here, they have a good financial ability to purchase any products that they want. So it's a great way to test the water. Um, and then to be present on at least one or two social media platforms in China that are very uh, frequently used by um, Chinese audience here in the UK. Then we can look at the expansion plan um, directly to China uh, after the first year or the second year. That's great. Um, thank you. And um, yeah, do you see WeChat coming to the UK? I think this is a great one. Uh, sorry, could you repeat the question? Oh, sorry. Do you see WeChat coming into the UK? Do you think there will be an expansion into the UK of WeChat? Um, so WeChat is available in the UK and is available for UK businesses to yeah. register and verify um, accounts on the platform. So um, as the official partner with them, we can assist you on doing so. Um, so mm -hmm. Chinese user here in the UK as well, they on a daily basis, like myself and my colleagues who are Chinese, um, we use WeChat to communicate with each other on a daily basis and we browse on um, official accounts, look look at shopping information, sales, mm -hmm. and all of that. So yeah, WeChat is quite widely available in the UK here. Okay, so that's great. It's been like a fantastic presentation. I guess that's why there were not that many questions because you cover everything <laughs> quite great. Um, so yeah, thank you everyone. The recording will be available, as I said, once the International Trade Week is over. Um, thank you, Jess, very much for your amazing presentation. Um, we hope to see you all soon. Yeah, thank you for having me and thank you for everyone for, for, to join this session today. Thank you. Bye. Bye.